So guys, after a while of not putting one of these out, I'm back making another anime review. This time being for an anime I got into just a few months ago, Outlaw. This is another space-themed anime from the nun. He's like something like Cowboy Bebop. But if, but if I'm being completely honest, I like this show a lot more. I honestly love this series. For one, this is my Cowboy Bebop. In a similar way to how people feel about that series and love so many things about it and have a great appreciation for it being a space-themed anime. That's exactly what this show is for me. I've watched this show about three times already, and I absolutely love it. It become one of my favorite anime ever, and I think this is a great, and I think this is a great series to be able to binge watch. It basically sends it to me when he sit at the salon. I only found out about this anime a few months ago and I got curious to check it out and so I started watching it on my brother's DVD collection of the series and then I got my own Blu-ray of the, whole, of the entire show and, fi and I finished watching that. So let's get in the way. And like always, this will have all the spoilers for the whole show. So if you don't want anything spoiled, you'll watch it, then come back and watch the rest of this. So the plot of this series follows a guy named Jean Darwin and his partner Jim Hawkins on a planet where they run a business of fixing whatever someone needs. Gene also has a phobia of space, but that all changes when they meet a lady named Hilda who tricks them in helping her get off the planet. Not only that, but she's also being pursued by people who she goes from, and it's revealed that she stole a girl from them named Melfina, who's actually a cyborg. They get off the planet and find a special ship that Melfina is able to operate because she's a cyborg. When they manage to get a Hilda is killed by the people they were that, that were chasing them, and Gene takes over as the captain of the ship and he calls it the outlaw. Are. They then hear about something called the Galactic Ley Line, which is said to have a special treasure there. They decide to go, and the rest of the series is following them on different adventures to eventually reach it. So yeah, a bit of that does sound somewhat episodic, but in my opinion, that's exactly what makes it so enjoyable. After the first few episodes, the majority of the series afterwards is showing them doing different things like jobs to get money and help them get to the ley line. But, 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 the way they do them and, and all that is really, really fun and really entertaining. I love when an anime feels somewhat episodic, but the episodes are still really entertaining and, and they show the different things they do to help them keep going and get close to what they're trying to do. I think something that helps with that is the rest of the crew they're able to yet, because for the first few episodes, it's just Jean and Mel Jean, Jim, and Melfina, but they start getting more members, like a how a how named Asia, who can turn into a tiger, and an assassin named Shijutia. They join up after a while, and, ha and the way they all come together, I just through with a lot of fun and health made the character dynamics even more entertaining. But they also manage to have a to have a plot unfold in other ways too. Like when they in, like when they introduce the McDoodle brothers but who 
Basically, the two main villains of the series with Ron and, and Harry, with Ron being the older and smarter one, and Harry being the crazy and more violent younger one who's upset with having Melfina for himself. We encounter them at different points in the show and, and in different ways. The first time is when they enter a race with the outlaw dog and lose, but they still find them and they have a really cool fight team with them and then the series goes into being episodic again until episode 15, which is maybe the darkest episode in the whole show, in the whole show because it has some really disturbing stuff in it. Gene is forced to fight someone but realizes he could most likely die and so this causes him to get depressed and miserable and he starts asking cold to every one. It's back to Melfina when he runs and he trying to help him, but that but then back leads to a really disturbing scene with the two of them. And yeah, that just and yeah, it's just kinda hard to see to watch that moment because it's so well done but also really disturbing. But then we see Gene at the fight and he manages to kill the guy only to see that it's actually another person that he had to that he had to kill that he met earlier in the episode and so through the site to help him and they manage to win but just barely and so it ends with their bond being stronger. But it does but yeah it, it was still a disturbing episode nonetheless and how they do that He's really well done. The series then keeps going as they keep doing more jobs and encounter more enemies. Especially fight in the Mephudo Brothers again when they try to invade the ship and do other things too, like the episode where they help a guy get stuff out of a sunken ship or when Asa takes part in a women's uh, wrestling tournament and when they all get taken into custody or even some smaller stories like when Jim meets a girl on a planet and they quickly become friends but then they unknowingly fight each other in their ship with causes the girl to die and Jim is sad but with her not showing up again and so it's nice when we see someone like Jim have a story like that because uh, he may be great with technology and all that and a great partner had for Gene but he still technically still technically a small head and so having story like they help us sympathize with him. But the series begins to come to a close in episode twenty one when the crew find a planet with ruins that they think could lead them to the galactic ley line and they, and they end up fighting the Matilda brothers again and then they and then they're contacted by a guy named Gwen Khan who's another one of the main villains and this leads to an episode where Gene infiltrates a prison to find someone who can tell them where the galactic ley line is and so they manage to get in to the prison and get him out and they, and they find out where it is. It would have been cool to see them immediately go to the ley line from there, but then we get maybe the funniest episode in the show where Gene and the other go to a hot friend planet and try to get past yourselves. I think magical bullet for a special gun that Gene had. And then, oh, that bit, so it's just one gigantic laugh after another with Gene being forced to help someone in return for for it while while some loser idiot is after him trying to kill him but just keep failing over and over. It's honestly one of the funniest episodes in anime I've seen in ages. But anyway, then that leads to the last three episodes which serve as the finale for the whole show. This has Gene and the other and the rest of the crew along with the Mephudo 
struggled with went on, a bunch of pirates led by a guy named Hedonio, who basically the final villain of the show, all arrive at the ley line, and the ley line itself sort of acts like it's alive. It helps them to different places, and they all meet up at the same place, and they even, and it even takes Melfina, because for a lot of the series, she's trying to figure out exactly what she is and why she was created, but then it revealed that she, along with the outlaw Yara itself, were created as a means of reaching the ley line and understanding it, and so that, and so she takes it to the center, and to the center, her of the ley line and Jean and Harry try to get her back. And we get a really cool action scene where Harry try to try to yawn her but he kills him and then Ron is seriously injured. Jean then arrives and gets knocked out but then Jim manages to help him. And this actually helps to show that this part has an amazing moment for all the main characters because Jim is trying to help Jean. Asia finally gets to go all out with her power that it had at all at all. And the Jutia manages to fight and kill the person who killed her family. And Jean and Melfina find out more and more information about the ley line. And this all culminates in Jean when Han and Hedonto get into the center of the ley line and get in a lot of information and Melfina has sort of merged with the ley line and things start going crazy when Jean and Hedonto fight like, like that but when it looks like they've all been killed and they go deeper inside the ley line and Melfina explains more about the ley line and just to Jean and so that and that she's able to grant him any wish. When Tom was all so killed after learning the information he wanted and Hedonto got all the power he wanted and so Jean just said that he just wanted all of them to go back to normal and so they managed to get back to the ship and begin to fight Hedonto and they managed to beat him and the series then ends with them going back to their home planet and Jean decides who wants to keep going around bait doing jobs and it looks like everyone is happy and the crew decides to take the job and the series ends with them just flying off and doing whatever adventure is next. So in all honesty, I love this. So, even though I'm fairly new to it, I absolutely love it, and it quickly become um, one of my new favorite animes of all time. The series just has such a likable charm to it, and it's so much fun from beginning to end. Even though the series is only 26 episodes long, it, and it's very episodic, and kind of feels like filler for a good amount of it, it's still done the best way it could have been done and and that's all due to just how much fun the characters are. I love all the main characters. Jean is a super likable and fun and funny for having it. Jim is a great, great as a partner for him. And Melfina, Asia, and Sejuta are all great characters as well. With Melfina being very kind and gentle and compassionate. Asia being crazy and funny and over dramatic. And Sejuta being quiet and a bit of a loner, but you know, being really, really cool. I think Asia is the funniest character in the series, but being super over the top and having a ton of great different situations and being over dramatic about everything. And like I said, I love the different kind of dynamics they all have with each other, with getting on each other's nerves a lot and better in a lot of it. Time, but still being great friends and having each other back no matter what. And while I just some episodes were better than others, there was never one I disliked and thought that it was kind of an 
annoyed and they all just, they were all, they all had a really great charm to them. And the episodic feel to the show also helped make some side characters stand out too, like Fred or even uh, Hilda. I'll be honest, I was really surprised when Hilda died. I really thought she would be one of the main characters given how integral she was to the first few episodes. So, the animation is all so fantastic in the series. I love how colorful and bright everything is and how everything really does just pop. And the different ways they do colors and designs and shading and all that has really helped make this one of the best looking anime I've seen in a while. Especially since this show was made in the late 90s. I also love how even though this is an old anime from the 90s, it still holds up incredibly well. I think a good reason for that as well is also just the voice acting with the job. Because it's filled with factors I've never seen before in other anime before, but they all do an amazing job. Bob but loads as Jean, Brienne, Shildu, as, as uh, Jim, em, Emily Brown as Melfina, Lenore, John as, I, as Asia, Wendy Lee as Seducia. Every single one of them do an amazing job, and I'm so glad this series introduced me to them all. So overall, I'm so glad I got into this series, and so glad that I love it the way I do. What like I said at the start, this this is honestly my Cowboy Bebop. This is what I want in that series to be, and I genuinely believe this series is a better version of it. Which is kind of weirdly fitting, because they're both, because this series actually started shortly before Cowboy Bebop did back in 1998 in Japan, and they were both made by the same studio. I had an overall, I just, I had an amazing time with this show, and I can confidently say that this, is, uh, that this is easily one of my favorite new anime uh, now, and I'm really happy I finally saw it. So guys, yeah, if you if you haven't seen this yet, I would highly, highly recommend checking this series out. I especially think this is a great series to binge watch, like I said earlier, and it's not, because it's not, because it's not a long show and, and it goes by really quickly but it's really really effective and so yeah guys that's my review for Outlaw Star thank you all so much for watching I hope you all like the video if you did then please like the video please comment down below to tell me what you think please follow me on Twitter at Daniel Maloney hey hey and Disney and write up Kingdom Hearts and Disney movies every day. And if you know someone who might like my content, then please help share my video to help my channel grow in, in any way you can. And I'll see. And please subscribe for more content like this coming soon. And I'll see you on next time. Take care.